speak about it. I feel like beyond just musicians, everyone just in a particular place where they've got a, a, a numbered audience or people looking at them, seeing what they're up to. I feel like they do have that responsibility that like you said to just be real and tell their stories because knowledge is power. Do you know what I mean? The fact that the fact that you can have your experiences and share them with the world or with the people around you at the very least means that you can learn things from certain things from each other. Like I learned a lot from um you literally just touched on it now, your experience with the with the running and the feds. Do you know what I mean? Can you tell us a bit about that? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so for anyone that doesn't know, this is all public information anyway. Yeah. I was sitting outside my car. I was sitting outside my parents' house in my car. And um, basically the gang unit that is active around, obviously, my parents' house, the place I grew up, rolled up to me, asked me questions about the ownership of my car and eventually searched me for weapons. And at the time, you know, they weren't... They were they were being disrespectful to my family, friends, and my neighbours, and it. And um, we live streamed it. Then I uploaded some footage of it the, the 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 next day. And what I was really pushing for was a conversation with the Met. Everyone was getting onto me about suing the police. Mm. And I thought to myself, yo, if I sue them out there, it's just new enemies. Do you get me? Creating a block. Yeah, like we're not gonna want to listen to each other. Mm. And then people say, oh, but how can you listen to them people? This is my thing, yeah? If you want to ignore someone, you have to be able to live without them. Mm. I'm not saying you've got to be willing. Mm. I'm not saying that you've got to be happy. You You have to actually be able. Mm. A lot of us will be willing and happy to live without the presence of feds. Do you get me? (laughs) But are we able to is another question. How is that going to happen? A lot of feds will be, are able to ignore us as individuals. They're able to ignore us mm. because they might not live near us. Their, you know, their, their immediate circumstances might not directly or perceptibly be influenced by what happens with us mm. until all your kids' favourite artists are drillers. Mm. That's, when you are, that's when it's a problem, do you get me? Mm. So instead of us waiting to the last minute and passing up these opportunities by kind of copping out because of our emotions and say, yo, I, I, I don't want to chat to them man there. Of course you don't want to chat to them, mm. but something's got to give. So that's been my whole approach. That's why I've, like, in the, in the immediate wake of what happened, I was very vocal. And then after my, uh, um, after me publicly making it known where I stand, obviously you're, like, you're badding me up in front of my peoples. Do you understand what I'm saying? My peoples ain't used to seeing me getting handled like that. Mm. All of these kids that look up to me, you're you're you're, you're undermining my argument. My argument, like everyone, every artist, speaking to what you asked earlier about responsibility, mm. every artist is an argument, is a is a case, is a case study. Mm. What do you represent? Um, I'll never forget Gig saying, "Hollow Man was the first gangbanger on the red carpet." That's mm. a case study. A case study, still. Do you get me? Now, my, I'm 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 someone who who's born and raised in the hood. And I didn't do road. Like, I've coexisted with road. You can't live in the hood and not acknowledge yeah. and live and abide and respect and observe. Those experiences. Yeah, like, mm. it's a fact of your life. But at the same time, I've also tried my best to, to, to do the, you know, to walk the path less trodden, to go to Cambridge, to build. So if I'm trying my best, and I'm still getting dealt with like I'm doing road, you're undermining my argument, my brother. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, well. So, for that reason, I felt like we had to have a conversation and now I am in conversation with the police to try and see how we can advance, how we can improve our dynamic because there's, like I said, there's so much compound trauma. There's so many unaddressed issues that if I pass up that opportunity, we're just gonna end up in the same cycle. Mm. So, like, for you, how easy would you say is getting into these spaces? Guys, like you said you tra- you've trained yourself in, in in various spaces other yeah. than the ones that you're used to. And I know there's a few people out there that probably want to be able to start these conversations mm-hmm. and be able to speak to these people, but they probably don't know how to or how to go about it, or mm-hmm. even the first thing they need to do. Mm-hmm. But they know that. 
these are the people they need to talk mm. to. How easy have you found it getting into these spaces? How would someone who wants to be able to have these conversations get into these spaces? Yeah. So the first thing I would advise anyone to just absorb, yeah, is that time is not yours. Don't tell yourself that you've got a plan, you've got a pattern, mm. and it is going to happen in your time. Your time yeah. Because it's not realistic, and it's not fair on yourself. You're actually expecting you to control time. You don't have that authority. So whatever your ambition is, recently a friend of mine saw up front how, how raw it can be dealing with police. Her neighbor was arrested. He's 15 years old. His parents weren't present. No one knew what station he got taken to. Um, she, she felt like she went down to stations, spent three hours of her life just trying to get treated like a human being, innit? Mm. Now, she was traumatized. And what I had to explain to her, first of all, I, you know, I, I empathized. I was like, sorry that you had to find out that, that, you know, like this is the reality for some people. Mm. But secondly, and she was like, I want to do something. I was like, cool. The best thing you can do is dedicate your life, a portion of your life, forever though, <laughs> to the problem. And in doing that, you got to think what you can contribute to it. That has to be your focus. Because yeah. if your focus is like, just a problem, you're gonna end up just talking about it forever. You'll get lost. Yeah, like you'll get lost in your emotions and you'll forget that you could have influenced it. So think about what you wanna contribute, but that takes education as well. Like you gotta make yourself aware of all the different levels of the problem. Mm. You gotta try and understand what, you could, what can be done that hasn't been done before. So a lot of people find out about police, um, police conduct in our community and they, they want a like. They want a law to, to be passed, but what law? You, now yeah. you got to investigate the law, and you got to investigate the relationship between the law and reality. Mm. If that's your route, like what I'm saying is, there's no time in it. So you really have to take that seriously if you want to do that. Because what end, what happens is that people get frustrated with the with the pace of change, and they say, ah, oh, it's too long, or people are too hard headed, or black people don't want to unite. Cause that's on you. If you are serious about this thing just like if, if, if you were a parent you that's a lifelong project you know you, you're not waiting for you to hit 18 and then you're no longer accountable for their decisions mm. or answerable for their actions so that's what i would encourage anyone to do really take it on in the heart investigate what is being said and what hasn't been said and what you can contribute okay sick that's it and i think Rain it, raining it back in onto kind of what we do. Um, I feel like there's an increasing amount of um, young poets out there, people who see kind of what George the Poet's doing, what Sully Brace is doing, what Emmanuel Speaks is doing, what Sophia Foucault is doing, and saying, I want to be able to do this and get into these spaces. I want to be able to express myself through poetry. But again, maybe they don't know how, where to start or they don't perhaps see any longevity in what it is that they're doing how do they differentiate themselves how do they what what, what can they piece together to help them to, to achieve it kind of from from um the level that they're at and seeing it from the outside looking in how do they get their foot in the door yeah. how do they take it to that level that they they perhaps could never imagine do you know what I mean? yeah man so the first thing is you have to put yourself out there at some well, point yeah not necessarily straight away well, when you're ready, you know. When you're ready, both feet, both feet forward. You know what I'm saying? You got to jump in with both feet. So, with that in mind, you also got to think about what you're contributing. This is why I advise you. If you're interested in my career and how I've done things, think about what you want to contribute. Don't think about flow. Don't think about necessarily just being the best. Don't think about money. We'll talk about money in a second. But in terms of your voice, what are you actually saying? And that, a lot of the time we say, oh, you got to find your niche. That's funny because we, we are all niche, like we're all individuals. So when, you, when people say that, what it is, is that you actually have to unlearn how to act like everyone else. Stop thinking about everyone else. Think about you, what is unique about you. Some people, are, some of us are mixed heritage. Talk about that, tap into that. Do you get me? Some of us, grew up in care that is maybe that's part of the the unique offering that you can present to the scene I feel like one thing that's something that I probably did when I was a little bit younger as well is that 
when a lot of young poets are coming up or, or writing their poetry, they try and appeal to everybody. Mm. They try and write something that everybody can relate to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's a mistake that I made when mm. I first started writing until I got a little bit older. I was like, I don't need to save everybody. I don't need to be this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's not that. All I need to do is tell my story and the story of the people around me because that's what's real. That's what's going to be more effective Fact. than trying to make any sort of umbrella piece that everyone's going to be like, Real yeah, talk. this is amazing. Real talk. Is, you know I mean, it doesn't work like that. Like I said, I was an MC, so mm. when I started putting poems on YouTube, I was only re- used to talking to Mandan mm. or presenting, performing f- for Mandan. Mm. And being an MC, you're spitting at 140, mm. 140 BPM, so you're, you're used to spitting fast. Mm. And through that process, I learned that first of all, there's other people that actually listen. The people that are coming up to me talking about my content, mm. even though it used to be bars, now that there's no music involved, first of all, they're hearing me. Secondly, they've got opinions. They don't understand why I use the N word. Mm. They don't understand why I'm so vexed at the estate. Mm. They don't understand why I can't see the structural causes um, of the behavior that I'm perceiving. So, because they're coming up to me and talking, that's how I grew. Mm. Do you get me? Like you said, you can't just be ready. You can't just be ready for everyone. Jay-Z weren't ready for everyone when he started. Mm. He was chatting to his people and mm. anyone that was mm. doing road at the level that he was doing that, that's who he was really talking to. That's why his first album didn't really sell when it dropped. Mm. But over time, he learned how to bring more people into the conversation mm. through just presenting himself differently, but he's still presenting himself though. Mm. So yeah, that's what I'd advise. I think you got to remember like, as an artist, it's more than just your content. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. It's, it's what you're doing outside of your content. What, yeah, talk. what other things are you drawing into? How are you then creating this tree of different branches yeah. and, 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 and building around what, right. what it is that you effectively are talking about in your content? But um, I understand there's a couple of questions. You said? Yeah. Um, basically, what I wanted to ask was, it's clear that you're in, engaged in public life. Um, and the main thing I wanted to know is what sort of change do you want to see in the life that you live? Or the world that you live, sorry. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I want to see um, entertainment used for education. So, like, you're, for all entertainers, anyone who creates content that's supposed to be consumed as entertainment, approach it with the intention to tell the listener something real. I think if everyone did that, then in the downtime that we all spend listening to music, watching Netflix, we'd absorb a lot more realness. That's it. Okay, and then we got one as well um, from the gram, and and they were basically asking like if there was one thing that you, or one value that you feel like everyone should be born with that will make the world a better place, what would that be? Empathy. Yeah. Empathy. Mm. Like, if I could, if there was a pill that could just boost everyone's empathy levels, <laughs> yeah, I'd promote that. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. But yeah, man. Um, time isn't exactly on our side today. We've had a good chat though. Yeah, we've been through quite a lot. I feel like um, there's a lot that I've learned. Hopefully, there's a lot that you lot have learned. For sure. Hopefully, you lot at home as well. There's a lot that you've learned. Thank you to my guest G. Nothing, big man, George, a poet, my Respect. big brother here. And um, yeah, man, catch you on the other side. Love, love. Um,